Read the news, surf the web. Artificial intelligence, or AI, is a topic that pops up everywhere. No technical journal that does not propose AI technologies. Specifically in the scientific or technical world, the term artificial intelligence has been around for quite a while. Starting in the 1950s, all throughout the second half of the last century, artificial intelligence mainly employed rule-based methods. Since then, great advancements of computing power, digital data collection and data storage have led to reappearance of artificial intelligence, now based on data. AI is supposed to learn from available data in order to make intelligent suggestions, to optimize processes, even operations of chemical plants. So it all starts with having and using the right data. Absolutely. There are great things that can be done with AI and there are pretty good AI products out there. On the other hand, there's often great interest in process optimization and AI in general, but large concerns how to free up resources and time it takes to prepare the data, make sure the data are correct, and perhaps label data, for example, as good or bad quality. Well, if right now you cannot afford to spend time on data collection and cleaning, you can always start small with simple AI using data that are readily available. But even simple AI needs data that is in good shape, doesn't it? That's true. You do need data of good quality, otherwise you cannot expect good results. Optimizing a plant starts bottom-up, making sure the foundation is in good shape. There are well-defined tasks that just require limited data, data which are readily available in one spot, and also typically of good quality. Look at topics that are relevant for basic functionality of your process. For example, control loops. Poor performance, even of basic control loops, can cause so much trouble. Large variations in product quality, unnecessary cost, for instance, higher energy and raw material consumption. Bad loops can even affect equipment. Just think of wear and tear of control valves. You're right. It's worthwhile checking control loops regular and improving them where necessary. Unfortunately, this is a time-consuming task and time, of course, is limited. And this is exactly where simple AI can help and where necessary data are readily available and typically in good shape. I see what you're getting at. Let's stick with the analysis of control loop performance. A small piece of software the so-called data collector collects data from the DCS, PID parameters, values of the controlled and manipulated variables, set point values, and so on. And this data is uploaded by a secure connection to a secure cloud. It is analyzed using simple AI, and the results are provided via an interactive web interface. Actually, this infrastructure can also be used for process event analytics which also has some built-in simple AI. I'll talk about that later in a few minutes. But why don't you go in more details on control performance analytics first? Behavior of control loops, that's always a little complex, isn't it? CPA or control performance analytics offers different levels of detail. At the top level, you see the overall performance across all the PID loops of your plant. You have full transparency across different plant areas and across seven KPIs, which describe seven categories of control loop behavior. Message performance? That doesn't sound too complex. Yes, indeed. The first two KPIs can be evaluated without deep process control expertise. Often, we even find the low-hanging fruit there. For example, a loop that is often in manual mode may indicate that there is a problem with the loop check back with the operator and you might find an opportunity for improvement. But of course, CPA can go much deeper than that. You can systematically drill down and check out behavior of the individual loops at different periods of time. CPA has it all readily prepared for you. Impressive. Can you show me those details? Well, for each loop, you can see how performance has been changing over time for the various KPIs. And 
you can investigate time series plots. Check out this example where CPA detects a sticking control valve. It is simple AI that detects the pattern. Or quite common oscillations. Apart from time series plots, you get additional information tailored to each KPI, if needed even for a specific time interval. For example, histograms, scatter plots, average oscillation period, and many others. Okay. So CPA basically does the performance monitoring of PID control loops for you. But then what? For my time as a project engineer, I recall that quite often there were loops that would have benefited from some tuning. Absolutely. If you are sure that the control loop needs retuning, you can have CPA do the calculations for you. CPA uses the available data and calculates optimized sets of PID parameters for different scenarios. Users can choose not only between PI and PID control, but also whether they prefer set point tracking or disturbance rejection as the main task of the loop. So CPA provides transparency of control loop performance across the whole plant. It gives you insights as to what categories of problems might be there and even provides optimization calculation for optimized PID parameters if needed. Hmm. It looks like you need a process control background in order to use CPA, don't you think? You're definitely right. Looking at skill levels, I would say it is okay if some users just watch those first KPIs related to alarms, warnings, operator inputs. But certainly there should also be colleagues who have a basic understanding of PID control. Ideally, you're using CPA in-house. And if there is at least one technician or engineer with a process control know-how at the plant, by all means, CPA is going to be very useful in close connection to the daily work at that plant. If, however, there is not the time and the resources available at the plant, a smart move could be for a central department to take over, someone who is generally in charge of operational excellence. Such a central group would use CPA for several plants or even sites, and get in touch with the colleagues at the plants whenever they see a need. Instead of using it in-house, control performance analytics could even be outsourced to an external service provider. And also at Siemens, we have process control experts who can support with consulting. Now, that was a lot on control performance analytics. But what about analytics of process events, Andreas? alarms, warnings, messages. Could you tell me a little bit about process event analytics? Of course. Process event analytics is an application which enables you to gain transparency of your alarm system based on international standards. It provides you a data-driven analytical decision-making base to easily develop effective optimization measures. What are the main drivers for this? I mean, why should operations management look into this? There are several good reasons for doing that. First, to comply with requirements and ensure compliance with international standards. Insurance aspects. Actually, we had a customer who was able to decrease his insurance premium because he was using process event analytics. Workload reduction and transparency creation of the plant are other reasons why to choose it. Also, minimization of operating errors by the plant operators. And operating errors can result in severe accidents. Unfortunately, yes. Several accidents from the past illustrate the need for a proper alarm management process. And there you need an application like Process Event Analytics, which helps you to evaluate and improve your alarm system performance. I'm interested to learn more about Process Event Analytics. Could you give me a short overview? Sure. Just as CPA, PEA is a web-based application and it's using the same infrastructure and data collector. Let us have a look at the dashboard. In the first view, it provides a granular evaluation of the performance of your alarm system. This evaluation is based on international IEC and ISA standards, as well as the recommendation of EMUA 191 third edition. For example, 
the overall status of this demo system was evaluated as reactive. By clicking on the info button, you get additional relevant details. But Andreas, today we talk about simple AI, and so far I just see a dashboard. True, but process event analytics is much more than just a dashboard. Let us select an area of the plant and see what analysis results it can provide. On the right navigation, you'll find top 10 sources, event floods, event chains, operator changes, event type distribution, and event priority distribution. For instance, in order to detect event chains, we have implemented new patented algorithms that enable a quick analysis by the user. Event chains. Interesting feature. It would be nearly impossible for a human to detect such chains. Therefore, AI. Very clever. Now I am keen to see how this has been implemented. Then let us have a look. Process Event Analytics recognizes chains and presents them with useful information, including their relevance, significance, and number of occurrences. The chain length is immediately visible. By selecting a chain, the time distribution of the chain is displayed and the corresponding messages are displayed by clicking on the info button. As you can see, regarding the amount of messages, this cleaning sequence has optimization potential. And Christiane, by optimizing this chain, you can reduce the workload of the operating personnel. And you will not only make the operators happy. With control performance analytics and process event analytics, you have two applications which are easy to implement, automatically grab the data they need, and use simple AI to support intelligent operations. True. And if you are searching for a way to boost your operational excellence by applying simple AI, start now and contact your local Siemens agent.